You thought we were done talking about the area under y equals x squared from 0 to 2? But we're not. We're going to look at it at least four more times. This area is so interesting because it's so fundamental. You know, if you understand one simple case of something very deeply, then you can extend that understanding to lots of different cases. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to estimate that sum a, a lot of different ways, but every time using just one rectangle. One rectangle. Um, we're going to use a left-hand sum, then a right-hand sum, then a midpoint sum, and then something I personally invented, the magic sum, the magic point sum. All right, and this is actually going to be very useful to us. So um, you can do one, two, and three on your own. And then come back if you're not sure what I mean about number four. All right, go do number one, two, three, and come back. Okay, you're back now. Now, all right, we, when we do the left-hand sum, that means we're just going to have a rectangle that touches on the left, and it's just going to be zero. When we do the right-hand sum, we're going to have a rectangle that touches on the right, and so I only have, you know, one rectangle, R1, R1, or we could call it A1 or whatever, all right? And uh, that area is clearly eight, all right? Uh, so, but what's, if I pay attention to what's going on here, I can understand what we mean by the x1 equals two square root three over three. Like, what is that about? So we usually, when I lay out these sums, we're gonna have x1, x2, x3, that's our x sub i's, right? And sometimes for a left-hand sum, I start with x sub zero, which is convenient in some uh, notations and not in others. And in this case, I'm gonna call them all x1. The difference among these four different types of evaluating this single rectangle Riemann sum is where the x1 is. That's the only difference. So in this case, the x1 is 0, and uh, so f of x1 uh, is equal to x1 squared, so f of 0. I'm not sure how to put that exactly. I guess we'll go like that. f of 0 equals 0 squared equals 0. So that means that r1 equals, um, and what I want to keep coming back to is f of x sub i, which in this case is just x sub 1, delta x, right? So what's the delta x in every case? In every case here, the delta x is 2. So we only have one rectangle. The delta x is 2 in every case because it's the whole bottom of the, of the area. All right, so this is, you know, and I've, obviously this rectangle is zero, but look at where the parts come from. Since f of x1 is zero and the delta x is two, that means it's zero. All right, so that is our left-hand sum estimate. Our right-hand sum estimate is obviously eight, but just to really look at where that came from, x sub one is two this time. So we only have one x sub i, so we're calling it x sub one, it's two. All right, so then f of x sub one, which is x sub one squared, is going to be f of 2, which is 2 squared, which is 4. So r1, they're all r1s, uh, equals uh, f of x1 times delta x is 4 times 2, which is 8. All right? Uh, midpoint sum. So for midpoint, you take, you go to the middle of the uh, rectangle that we have and take its midpoint, which is 1. So that's going to be our our rectangle that we're going to use. It should be a little bit closer. Now, by the way, we're going to be taking advantage of the fact that we actually already know this area. All right, we know what the area actually is, and we're going to, because we figured that out before. We figured out before that the true area under this curve is the sum, sorry, it's the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum from i equals 1 to n of f of x sub i delta x. Um, which we also call the integral from 0 to 2 of x squared dx. All right, this is just a name. We worked this out. We know this area is equal to 8 thirds, okay? So our initial estimate of 0, not very good approximation for 8 thirds. 8, not very good approximation for 8 thirds. Now for the midpoint, the x1 is 1, so uh, my x1 is 1, uh, so my f of x1 being x1 squared, f1 is 1. 1 squared, which is 1, so my uh, area of the rectangle, which is my estimate for a single rectangle, being f of x1 times delta x is 1 times 2, which is 2. Now the actual area is 2 and 2 thirds, so clearly this is the closest one. Now, so I wanted to emphasize like how the type of sum that you're doing really just determines what the x sub 1 is. 
So in this made up magic point sum, I just pick the point x sub 1 equals 2 square root 3 over 3. So if you haven't figured this one out yet, use the same pattern, figure out what this area is now, and come back when you've got it. And you're back. All right, so our f of x1 is still x1 squared, so f of 1, oh, sorry, it's not f of 1, it's, uh, we have to do f of 2 square root 3 over 3, which is 2 square root 3 over 3 squared which is equal to 4 times 3 over 9. 4 times 3 over 9, which is um, 4 thirds, right? 4 thirds. Okay. Now, R1 is equal to F of X1 times delta X, which is our 4 thirds, times our delta X, which is always 2, and that's 8 thirds. How close did we get to the actual area? It is exactly the right area. All right. Now look, using one rectangle, you don't expect your estimate to be very good. We want to use a thousand rectangles. We're just using one. This one got fairly close, but this one is exact. So what we're going to talk about next is how that works. So, you know, we'll go to the point two square root three over three. Like, where is that? It's two times one point zero. It's one ish. One point seven. It's a little bit more than one, I guess. So here's one. Here's uh, 2 root 3 over 3, and we make that rectangle. And here's the magic thing, is that the area of this rectangle happens to be exactly the same as the area under the curve. Now, what we're going to start taking advantage of is that there is always a magic point where you could use one rectangle to get the entire area. So why don't we just do that? because you don't know where the magic point is. How did I know to use 2 square root 3 over 3? I started with the fact that I knew the area was 8 thirds, and I back solved it to get that the x sub i had to be 2 square root 3 over 3. But I could not have gotten what the x1 was if I didn't already know the area. Therefore, this process just by itself doesn't help us. However, it turns out to be an integral step in what's to come.